When the new Bishop of Durham is announced, it's big news, and so it was on Ascension Day when the very Reverend Justin Welby's name was revealed. The appointment of the current Dean of Liverpool attracted interest from television, radio and print journalists, local and national. All were eager to hear how the new bishop would tackle the many challenges facing the Church of England in the North East. I feel a, an extraordinary mixture of emotions of uh, excitement, elation, a good deal of apprehension and terror about the responsibilities and uh, excitement I suppose most of all in anticipating what being around and seeing in this area one will see God do over the next few years. What I hope to achieve in the years of my ministry here, which I hope will be a long time, is to enable with my colleagues in the clergy the Church of England in the Diocese of Durham to grow into real excitement and renewal of its experience and knowledge of Jesus Christ. What are you looking forward to most as, as when you begin your ministry? Oh, that's very simple. Um, I'm really looking forward to being around, uh, just being with people in the diocese. What, what, what's fun is hanging out with people, listening, participating, just being part of, of the life of a community. And I think one of the great things about this job is, is, is to be able to hang out with people, you know, whether it's in a cold church hall with half a dozen people or in a larger gathering or best of all in a pub somewhere. You know, it, it, it's, um, it's, it's great to just have an opportunity to be around and hear what people think, engage with what they're saying. And you were working in, in big business, international business, international experience. What was the moment, the epiphany moment, when you suddenly realised that you wanted to give that all up and serve God? There was a moment when, it must have been uh, about 1987, it was back into 1987. Uh, we were at church one evening, full church. Uh, someone was preaching, talking about his own experience of God calling him into ordained ministry and if I'm if this I don't want to sound hotline to Goddy or sort of super pious but something in me said this is what you should be doing and the more it went on the less I wanted to do it it's just there was an inescapable sense of of call in my own mind to get to the end of my life face God and say I knew what you wanted me to do and I didn't do it after all that Christ has done for me on the cross and in his life and incarnation and resurrection, I just couldn't see how I could do that. When he takes up his post, Justin will be working closely with Mark Bryant, the Bishop of Jarrow, renewing an old friendship dating back many years. Uh, I don't know if you remember in Coventry, I can't remember his name, there was a wonderful priest in a uh, formal former pit village who'd been an, a missionary in Africa yes, right. and he spoke at uh, I think it was a Darson conference yes, yes. and everyone had been saying oh I'm doing this and I'm yes. doing that and isn't it wonderful mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and half of us were sitting there feeling I'm exhausted yes. and you know mm -hmm. and it's already tough and he stood up and said I've tried everything and none of it has worked and do you remember that sense of liberation Absolutely. it's extraordinary you said because I mean that keeps coming back to me um, and I've, I've told that story on, on many occasions um, and of course the remarkable thing about that story is the way it goes on is that he then went off and did something else yep. and a new man came in and the thing blossomed and I'm absolutely convinced that it blossomed because of what Jeff had done. Oh, yes. Jeff had hacked up the concrete, uh, he'd said his exactly. prayers, he'd been unspeakably faithful Yes. Um, and he didn't see, you know, the fruit. Um, but it was because of all the hard work that he put in uh, that I think if you go there today, there's some really quite exciting things happening. There are many other challenges to face, not least the decline in church attendance and the struggle to convince non-believers that Christ has a place in the modern world. It's very important to say 
to people and to churches and to clergy and to lay people, you can only do what you can do. And if God hasn't opened doors and made things happen because it's him who does it, we just go with him. Our job is to see what God is doing, get alongside and join in. What about Southam, where you were vicar? Because I, I think the, the numbers there grew very significantly. I mean, what was, what was the secret there? On the very rare occasions where we were camping where the sun shone, you'd put up the sides of the tent and you could go in and out yes. through lots of different ways. And I think one of the things about the church is we've got to find more doors in and out. I don't know if you remember there was a bank in the 70s that had an advertising slogan about the bank that likes to say yes. Well, yeah. our slogan was, we're the church that so likes to say yes. yes. Um, it was just opening the sides mm. of the tent and saying, actually, it's, we're quite friendly and human. We need to go back to God, who is the source of our strength, and to renewing our own relationship individually and collectively with God. How do you think we should respond to this tough time that's come into our region? I think there are a number of things. The church, and that means particularly the visible members of the church, the clergy, the, the, the parishes, the bishops, and above all bishops in the House of Lords, have to make sure they're on the side of the poor. We've got to talk about the common good. And I think in the House of Lords, the bishops must speak clearly about solidarity and the common good, but also my challenge is to speak in an informed way. Mm. And we've got to make sure that we are properly researched and that enables us to be powerful advocates. That gives you insights that are unique. Yes. And uh, friends of mine who are in the House of Lords who are not necessarily sympathetic to bishops say that when a bishop who is rooted in their area speaks with knowledge of the area about an issue, people listen. There will be some controversial topics. What are your views on the ordination of, of women as priests and, and or bishops? Uh, I'm in favour. I work very closely with a number of, and um, have done for many years, with uh, some Roman Catholic friends who simply find it incomprehensible that we should be thinking of ordaining women. And we talk about it, but we remain very close friends. I remember this, I think it was the Sunday Times about four years ago, had a headline, how these Christians hate each other. And you've got to ask what that's doing for our mission and our work as a church. These questions are profoundly important. I am passionately concerned about how we disagree, not about so much what we disagree on. In other words, we can disagree very vehemently and passionately and deeply about a subject. So often when we get into these discussions, we end up saying, not only is my opponent wrong, but they're subhuman in some way. And that is absolutely unacceptable in every possible way. We have to hold on to the essential dignity of the human being. Whatever they're doing, whoever they are, they have an essential dignity because they're made in the image of God. I mean, the Bible very basically says, love your enemies and love one another, and that actually cuts uh, there aren't a lot of people left who we shouldn't be loving, and we just haven't been very good at that. How do you marry the idea of, of, of those who would prepare, prefer traditional worship with the need to bring in more modern forms? Why does it have to be one or the other? They're both doing immensely valuable work, and different people are encountering God in each service. Wonderful. Praise God, let's get on with it. Uh, you will be asked your views on many controversial topics, so let's start with the most controversial one of all. Which football team do you follow? That's a really dangerous 
question. Um, the, the, the true answer is anyone who's playing Chelsea. Um, I think the other thing I'd say to you is I spent five years doing conflict resolution and learning to stand in the middle of a civil war without getting shot. So I'm not going to answer your question. I think one of the things you will also find as you get to know the diocese is that we have a, a lot of priests uh, and congregations who are working really, really hard, mm. but don't seem to be getting that sort of growth 